Hey guys, how's it going? It's your boy Mouse. I sound like this because I actually was recording a video about the Chucky TV series season 2 and I did 20 minutes long of explanations and all that and I just realized I was muted. I fucking hate making videos. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Alright, let me just do it again, I guess. Fuck it. So, uh, I'm going to start saying some of the spoilers into this episode. And then I'm going to give you my take on like how I truly felt about the show and all that. And also, right, like my TV's still on and they're showing um, a TV show called... Um, something, what is it? Um, shit, something vampires, I don't fucking know. Um, okay, so... It starts off pretty epic. Starts off with Andy um, kind of driving the truck that you see in the last episode of of season one, and it's filled with Chucky dolls inside the truck. And and Tiffany is actually in the truck, but not just the human one, but the doll one, the doll Chuck, uh, the the bride of Chucky, Tiffany. And uh, she's in there with a gun, and she's kind of holding. Uh, she's she's actually holding Andy hostage. And it's kind of, kind of hectic, kind of epic, and who knows what the fuck's gonna happen at this point. They kind of fast forward, shows that um, Andy ends up killing uh, the Tiffany doll, and uh, when they realize that they see Alex's, uh, Alex's, Alex Vincent, um, when they see Andy's face through the uh, rear view mirror, they realize that it's Andy. So then they're like, all right, let's go get him. They they open the back trunk of the truck, and and Andy's driving fucking fast. And uh, they start getting out of the fucking truck, starting to go on top of the roof and everything. And they are so close of literally trying to kill Andy at that point. And Andy just drives it through a fucking cliff next to a big ass light up cross. And when he just goes through it all and everything, uh, truck gets like just completely goes off the cliff, going like maybe 70 miles per hour. It looks like it. Um, all the Chucky dolls fly out. That were on top of the roof with the knives, and some Chucky dolls that were still in boxes actually came out of the truck. Uh, the truck crashes, and um, that's when I assumed that Andy was done. I was like, okay, so technically this was Alex Vincent's last moment to shine for the Chucky TV series, and realized that um, apparently there was no body found. That's what they said, that's what Jake said. Um, and I think Devin says it at one point that, like, I think, um, there's no bodies found. They assume he's dead, but there's, n there's no clarification on, on if he, if, if Andy lived or not. But still. Then they show us to our three protagonists. They show Jake's life where he ends up moving and he has a new family, a foster family, as foster parents, with a foster little brother. And, um... He says that they're all right. They're, they're like okay parents, but they're kind of strict, I guess. Not strict enough to beat them, like you know, like like Jake's dad, where uh, Jake's dad ends up beating him and stuff whenever he got pissed off or sees how weird he is with these dolls and stuff. No, his parents are just kind of strict, but you know, that's just how they are, I guess. Uh, Jake does this l lovely thing. He sees uh, Devin for the last time, handshakes him, and says that, "Oh, I would love to kiss you, but I can't." Because uh, the new parents are there. He doesn't know how they feel. Uh, Devin, uh, when they drive off, uh, Jake's window is open. And then Devin comes down the hill when he's driving away. And he's going to be living kind of far. Uh, he yells out Jake's name. Jake just like tells the parents to stop the car. They, he rushes out the car. Then he does this passionate kiss. Um, that was actually part of the trailer as well. You guys can go check out the trailer uh, if you guys haven't seen it yet. Or watch the episode. I think that would be way better. But <laughs> he ends up kissing him. A, a long, passionate kiss. Uh, cameras trolling around them and stuff like that. Like, making it look all beautiful and shit. Uh, I think uh, Jake's uh, foster brother is a little, little brother. He looks like he's like six years old or something. He thought it was kind of cute. It's, it was adorable to see him uh, fucking with it, I guess. But uh, the parents were kind of strict about it. Um, later on in, in part of the episode, I think it was after the commercial break, he's in the new house, it's Halloween, and they're in Salem, New Jersey. And uh, I thought that part was pretty cool, the fact that they uh, he moved to Salem. And uh, obviously, anywhere in Salem, from Salem, Massachusetts, or Salem, New Jersey, they just love Halloween. And you see a bunch of kids with these cool-ass costumes and everything. Kids trick-or-treating left and right. 
and uh, they show that um, uh, Jake and his foster brother, they, they turn out to be customed Batman and Robin. And uh, apparently Jake ended up making the costumes and everything. So I thought that was actually pretty cool. The fact that he's actually trying to be there for, for his foster brother and he, he feels like he needs to start hanging out with him. He wants to be a brother. He wants to... Jake wants a life. He feels like this whole shit with this whole Chucky situation in the first season, he was like, that fucked me up. I'm trying to like move the fuck on, of course. But he is still paranoid. Apparently he started to get weird ass phone calls. Um, he starts to call Devin and he's FaceTiming Devin. And... Uh, it, it, it led to him feeling a little bit awkward and then even Devin even tells him that like hey I got a, a weird phone call too and Jake was like what the fuck's going on it's uh it's kind of it's kind of weird because I also got a weird phone call and uh and what's weird is that the phone call is obviously Chucky you hear Chucky's voice through the phone but uh Jake actually forgot about Chucky when it came to how he sounded like because he started to say like why does he sound so fucking familiar this guy but then this guy was just like oh I know that you're alone with your little brother I know that you're talking to your boyfriend on the phone and I'm just telling you right now that I yeah I, I know who you are and then hangs up on the phone starts to torture him a little bit and the first thing he's thinking about is that is Chucky 100% fucking Chucky he was carving a pumpkin on Halloween I, I, I don't even I, do I know anyone that carves like does anyone carve jack like like pumpkins does anyone carve pumpkin on Halloween let me know down below in the comments. I'm so curious on that shit. Because, like, I carve pumpkin sometimes very early through October. And sometimes very late on October. But not on Halloween. I never... I never done that. I, I never done it. But, like, if you if you guys do it, let me know. <laughs> I'm very curious if this is common. But, um, anyways, other than that, uh, he grabs a knife and, and about to open the door. And then no one answers. He closes the door and he checks the phone. No, uh, no phone call. He rings the doorbell, and apparently, um, there's, uh, they're doing a a three call way, where it's, oh, excuse me, um, it's Jake, Devin, Facetime each other, and then there's a middle Facetime of the unknown call that they've been getting, but it's saying to Facetime them. They both answer it. It's actually Chucky, but Chucky's kind of hiding who he is, of course, until you see his hand uh, touch the doorbell and you see it through the Facetime. So we know it's Chucky. It's a fucking doll hand. And then Devin and uh, Jake know it's Chucky. And they start to freak out that it's alive and knows where they live. But when he rings the doorbell, he's actually not ringing neither doors. He's actually ringing Lexi's house. The little sister comes and picks it up. Does not recognize him because I assume that he was wearing a... He said he was wearing a ghost outfit. So he was like wearing like a, a sheet over, <laughs> over himself. I would have loved to see that. I'm sorry. I feel like Chucky wearing a sheet over himself. It's just hysterical and adorable, but I couldn't get to see it. You don't get to see it. You just see, you just see what what we're seeing, which is pretty much Lexi's sister picking through the door, giving him candy, and then Chucky asks him like, "Oh, can I come in and uh, use the bathroom?" He's like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" And then <laughs> she just lets Chucky in. Chucky goes in, and uh, she loses track of the kid that walked in, aka Chucky. Chucky starts to tease and shows that Lexi is actually making out with some random kid, some random dude. Um, she, she's kind of going all over the top. Lexi's all, like, fucked in the head right now. She's, uh, doing a lot of drugs, smoking weed, uh, smoking a pipe, you know, um, she's, she's even sniffing coke, all that bull crap. It's so, it's insane. She, I, I'm not gonna lie, I even posted it on Instagram. Um, Lexi and how she dresses like and everything kind of gave me a Scout Taylor's Lori Strode from Rob Zombie's, like, Halloween 2. You know the, the 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 flannel, the um the ripped jeans, and the black mascara on her eyes, but not really giving a fuck and how the mascara looks like. It's just there, kind of smudged up. Messy blonde hair, like she didn't give a fuck. And she's also doing drugs, so it kind of gave me that vibe of like Rob Zombie's Halloween Two, uh, Laurie Strode. And um, yeah, at this point, um, she's kind of out of it. She doesn't give a fuck until um uh, when. When Jake and Devin saw that through the phone and then Chucky hangs up the phone, that's when Jake and Devin decide to just fuck it, call the cops who gives a fuck. Actually, he didn't even hang up. I'm pretty sure that he left his phone muted. So that means they were just like, oh, don't let the kid in. Don't let the kid in. Don't let Chucky in. Um, Lexi's little sister couldn't hear it because he actually muted the phone. So that means uh, if they're calling for help or whatever um, to try to attract 
Lexi's little sister, she wouldn't be here because he needed the phone. So at that point, they're like, fuck it, uh, call 911, whatever, just tell them that this is going, just don't mention anything about Chucky. Devin calls the cops and just say, hey, go to this address, um, um, there's a girl named Lexi that's going to get hurt or whatever. So they rush there, they ask questions, but Devin's like, oh, who cares, who cares about that, just go to that address and that's it. They go, and when, when they make it there, Lexi freaks the fuck out, like, what the fuck just happened, until one of the cops just says, hey, do you know a kid named Devin? Like Devin, uh, Devin Pierce or whatever. And that's when she was like, yeah. But then she starts to freak out because out of anyone, if Jake and Devin are literally calling the cops on Lexi, and obviously it's not going to be a prank. They dealt with all this shit in season one, so she knew it has something to do with anything. So she checks her phone, and when she checked her phone, it said, Chucky is back, um, and a bunch of other shit. I forgot there were two other text bubbles that, that showed up. I didn't, I didn't think I would read that part, but I saw the first one that said Chucky is back. So... Excuse me, I think I'm just talking fast and all the food that I just ate like an hour ago is just coming back to me. But I'm just burping, I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. But still, at that point, um, that's when, um, oh, also Chucky was actually recording her making out with his boy and everything and he was kind of hiding. And the camera kind of pans towards him and you can actually see him with the sheet over the chair and everything. And she didn't even notice that, but when the cops came, the sheet was actually gone and everything, it just disappeared. So obviously he ran off. At that point, um, there's a couple of scenes where um, Lexi and and her mom and her little sister are kind of griefing and they're going to see therapy. And and her mom doesn't really care. Her mom just still loves the fame. She loves the cameras and everything. And I'm just like Jesus Christ, this this fucking woman doesn't give a fuck about her kids at all. It really bothers you a lot. Um, Lexi is trying to help out with her sister as much as she can. And uh, her little sister is actually terrified of dolls now. But when, but the therapist is like a doll collector and had the actual bride before it transforms into Tiffany. So it was like the black hair bride doll and everything. And uh, tried to tell her that it's okay, we move forward, we take everything slow so that you won't be afraid of dolls. Her mom is just like encouraging it, being like, oh, just who cares, just take it, you know, take the doll. Takes the doll. And uh, at that point, um, later on in the episode, when they get back home, Lexi actually ties up that doll, beats the crap out of that doll before tying it up. She actually beats the crap out of the doll, fucking slamming it on the ground and everything. We get a cool GoPro uh, pan of the doll going up and down from the ground up, ground up and shit. And uh, when all that shit happens, um, she ties it up. But what was weird is that um, the doll actually got out of the chair and is in the bed with Lexi's little sister. Um, Jake and Devin finally make it to Lexi's house and give her a hug, all that stuff, talking about like, hey, I'm gonna quit drugs. And she's like, I'm just doing weed, it's normal, it's legal, whatever. And then um, she's like, oh, I never knew it was like an intervention. What the fuck is this about? Um, you know, her being a fucking badass sometimes. <laughs> she can just be like that, it's random. So at that point, um, uh, it, it led to um, the mom coming in and almost spotting Jake and, and Devin. Later on, that was like, whatever. They're chilling, trying to figure out a plan, trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. They know for a fact that uh, Chucky's alive and they need to stop him. And they know that there's probably several more later on because they realize that, that there's more Chuckies. And there you know. Apparently, uh, someone rings the doorbell or knocks on the door. I believe it's one or the other. No matter what, they're trying to get him. When, um, when Devin opens the door, it was actually Jake's little brother holding Chucky, <laughs> another, yeah, pretty much holding Chucky with a bomb, and, and he was telling the little kid, uh, well, um, was telling Jake's little brother that it's just a game, but it was a real bomb. Now, I thought it was a real, real bomb, like, if it explodes, the whole house is fucked. No, 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 it was like a gas bomb, I don't know, like, it leaked out green gas, so it was kind of weird, but at that point, um, he was threatening them. He held them hostage, Devin and Jake were sitting on the chairs, and also Lexi's little sister, and um, Jake's little brother. And at that point, uh, they were waiting for Lexi. Lexi was in the bathroom actually sniffing some sort of pills, I don't fucking know. She gets it out of the cabinet, and then she fucking crunches it and everything, and breaks it, and then she sniffs it up. Uh, she's kind of fucked right now, she's kind of whoopy. She, uh, but then, Chucky did say, when he sees her, and when she sees Chucky, and witnesses that Chucky's alive, He's gonna blow it up. He's gonna press the button from the bomb, and that's it. And they were kind of worried. 
and to be honest, though, Chucky kept making jokes, being like, when, <laughs> Chucky kept making jokes, being like, yo, what the fuck's going on? Like, you know, what the fuck is this bitch? Like, why is it taking forever for her to come down? And at that point, um, it took a while, but when she finally made it down, she's kind of seeing all the screens going loopy and weird and shit, and notices that Chucky is alive and right there holding them hostage. And then she's like, what the fuck? And at that point, Devin just strikes him with a taser. Devin tases <laughs> Chucky. And Chucky fucking flies, bro. He launches in the air, which was hilarious. And then, um, for some reason, Jake's little brother takes the bomb. Because, once again, he thinks it's like a game. So he takes the bomb and dips. I don't know why Jake didn't decide to get up and tell the brother to not hold the bomb or whatever. No, no one showed up or anything. The reason why I'm mentioning this and kind of, that I'm kind of annoyed is because when, he, uh, when Jake's little brother goes into the kitchen with the bomb, just joking around him fucking around while um chucky's on the ground just got tased <laughs> he uh his little brother ends up seeing the bride doll like in the kitchen on a chair but not moving or anything it's just a doll and then the kid gets like kind of weirded out by it but then chucky comes out from nowhere and i'm not gonna lie when chucky comes out of nowhere like he scared me chucky fucking jumps out of nowhere and just says boom and starts laughing and presses the button while the kid's holding it and everything in the bomb. Then the bomb blows up and a bunch of green gas comes out from nowhere. Like it just fucking bursts out, breaks the window and, and just bursts out. So that was a strong, weird gas bomb thing because the kid's holding it. So most likely he got hurt from it. So apparently the kid died, bro. Like <laughs> the uh, Jake's little brother actually died from that bomb. And I'm like, whoa, like that's, like that's kind of gnarly. Like I, I'm like, I'm not even gonna lie. Like that's, that's old D. That's a big start on the first episode of season two. I, mean, I shit you not. And um, at that point, um, they they end up being in this weird facility of like a man and a woman, and the woman was actually the therapist as well. Uh, and there's the there's the trio. There's Devin, Jake, and Lexi in that order, sitting on a couch. And um, at that point, they start to explain that like, what are we gonna do with you guys? Because it seems like you guys can't, you know, behave or anything. They bring them to a institution. It's like a, a, a Catholic school in a way or something. I don't know. Um, there's like a nun in there, and she ends up introducing herself and bringing them in. But before that, they were like, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a place where a bunch of fucked up individuals, a bunch of kids that are like mad delinquents and shit, and they, they don't know when to learn or anything like that, uh, are forced to go to that, to that facility. So they get forced into there, and at that point, uh, they're taking a bus all the way over there. They're talking about, you know, Chucky the whole way, to be honest. They're just talking about like, we, we, it's like they don't care where they're going to be led to. They really don't. They don't care about that because the only thing they're trying to do is live. That's what. They don't even care where they go. It's just that if they live and not die from Chucky, that's all that matters. So, at that point, uh, they end up talking about like how Chucky could be still alive or whatnot in the bus. Uh, Devin tries to comfort Jake by holding his hand and everything, but Jake is kind of dealing with a bunch of remorse. The fact that his little brother kind of died. So, obviously, it's kind of too soon. As much as that, yeah, they're not related. It's just more of like, shit, this little kid, there, there's nothing wrong with him. He thought he was cool, he never really had a little brother, so he was kind of, you know, he, he kind of loved the fact that he was a big brother to him, and this happened so fucking soon, out of Chucky, dude, so like, that's why it kind of hit him a lot. Um, Lexi kept talking about a bunch of other shit about Chucky and stuff, when they made it to the facility, uh, there's a nun that came out, introduced herself, uh, brought them inside, and in the end of the episode, the end of the episode, there is a, um, there is a truck that delivers packages and when they come out and he takes out one package for uh, the facility it's the size of an actual good guy doll i'm not a fucking idiot i know chucky's in that fucking package but it's sealed up and everything but it's shaped like his actual size of a good guy doll so we already know that's gonna be fucking chucky unless it shuts me up and it's not chucky at all we just assume but that's kind of stupid <laughs> to be honest i know for a fact it's chucky so yeah, that's that's the episode. Season 2 preview, there's like nothing that they kind of proved. They pretty much just showed a bunch of shit that we kind of seen on the trailer and everything and just say this way until next week. So I can't wait for that. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I want to I wanna actually like give you my, my take on this. I feel like throughout this whole episode, I was actually kind of to 
Like, from, from season one, I didn't give a fuck about Lexi at all. But then, um, from season two, I started to actually feel bad for her. And I actually started to like the character a lot. Because she kind of shows that as much as that she's kind of all over the place with the drugs and everything. Um, she kind of she gives a lot more character base when it comes to someone that is dealing with this huge fucking problem. Like, she's like, yo, fuck this shit. I don't know why um, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, this whole thing with Chucky and everything. It, it's unbearable. She didn't even expect any of this crap to happen. Um, kind of was feeling like sh she was feeling like shit. The fact that her um, her boyfriend was like a, a mass murderer and in the in the last episode, not last episode, um, the last season, and the mom never cared about that kid. Always hated him, and he was a, a nice guy in the beginning until he went to shit <laughs> near the end. But um, you, you start to feel bad about it, and and it I started to feel bad about it. I think my favorite character has to be Jake because Jake is just the main character. It's kind of cliche, I know, but I feel like Jake kind of gives a, a leader approach, uh, like something new, something that I didn't really expect. He was kind of, I'm going to be honest, he was kind of lame. <laughs> I liked him for what he was because it's a character that was new for me. Cause, so I always liked Jake and how he was, but like right now in season two, episode one, he was a leader. And I mean he was a leader. Like, he did not give a fuck. Anything that happened, he was on point with it. He was kind of too late when it came to his little brother. But, like, at that point, he was demanding. He knew what the fuck was up. He didn't give a fuck. He knew he was still alive. He He's becoming a young Andy. No joke. He was, he's becoming a young Andy. But, sadly enough, Andy uh, did not trust him until, like, when he was older, though. Like, way older. Like, after, like, Child's Play 3, I think, or 2. I don't know. I don't remember. But, like, he didn't trust that shit. He, he's starting to become, like, a younger Andy, and I kind of like it in a way. But, um, but yeah, uh, so far, first episode, I would give it, I would give it, like, a, I don't, I don't know if I should rate these. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going to rate these now. Nah, chill. <laughs> it was a good episode. I enjoyed it. If you guys haven't seen the fucking show yet, it's on Peacock TV. Watch the season one of Chucky TV series and try to catch up as fast as you can, because it's already starting now. But... Season 2, Episode 1, it's a great start. It's a great fucking start. I can't wait for the next episode. Alright guys, well that was my take and what I thought was the show. And and also, pretty much the episode. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the episodes of uh, Season 2 of Chucky. If you guys have any thoughts or anything at all about how I explained this and, and what you guys think about it. And if it actually encourages you guys to watch it, if you guys haven't, then I hope... I actually made you enjoy a lot more and also if you guys um, have any thoughts on the episode what you guys think about it or uh, any of your opinions whatsoever please put it down below in the discord um, and also down below in the comments on the video of course but like if you guys are in the discord server please post it up post up your um, your opinions on the episode I have a horror section in the in the server and it will be in the link below. Don't worry. If you guys see my Discord link, just click on it and just jump on in and then, you know, give your own take on it. I would love to fucking hear it. But until then, guys, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Chucky TV series, season two. We're, we're in it for, for, for the rest of the time being now. So next week, new episode, episode two, season two. Uh, I, can't, I can't fucking wait. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one, guys.